over its only extent. Alright, we'll look at that. Just make it full screen. Make what full screen? What you're seeing right there. Well, I'm, I'm trying to show you some stuff on the browser. So, let's do. Have you guys been here before? Jabber? Jabber.net? Yep. Uh, <coughs> This is actually in your PC, so yeah, it does know. Okay, so Jabber.net is one of their first official implementations of SignalR in a real-world application. This is an IRC type chat application, and a lot of teams inside Microsoft are using this internally. So the point is, um, you have a whole lot of um, chat rooms. So see the, all these things? These are all like different Azure or different technologies have their own chat rooms. This is the signal R chat room, right? And uh, see David Fowler is here. This guy doesn't sleep. Like I'm asking questions at 8 in the morning here. It's 5 in the morning in Seattle. It's still, he's still online. He's answering questions. So really, really um, hard work guy. So this is a nice place. If you are trying to use signal R and if you have questions or if you're stuck and you just want to ask somebody else who's, who may be coming across the same question, this is your real-time chat help, right? This is something that's running on Azure, but the backend is entirely single R, right? So this was one of their first things, and it scales incredibly well. So this is their real-time application of single R. If you want to have fun, let's see if this thing is still around. Wait, what was it? Hang on. Should we talk single R now? It's a little difficult since I cannot see what I'm typing. So, do you guys have internet here? Yeah, if you guys are connected. So, this is where our demonstration, like, or the talk stops, and we all get our tablets or phones out and we play each other <laughs> with a multi user game, right? So, this is so much fun. I'm going to sign in here. And Intern actually wrote this in, in, in Microsoft, and then they obviously scaled it up. So the point is, that's me, right? And this has a similar backend. I can move around. On a tablet, I can actually have, uh, see, on a tablet, I can have touch screen. And I can shoot, like when I hit the space bar, I'm shooting. So all of these guys, and you guys can actually join right here in real time if you want, and they're killing me, obviously, because I'm not moving. <laughs> um, but the point is, um, yeah, bye bye. Leaderboards. See these? These are CPU bots, right? It doesn't need to be bots. It can very well be you guys in the room, and that's that's kind of the fun part of it, because all of us are seeing the same screen in real time with a signal backend, right? I'll have a better demonstration, maybe then you can all, all chime in, because this is kind of hard to follow, and we can go off on a tangent and play this game for an hour. Mm -hmm. But just so you know, the kind of things, kind of cool things you can do. So while we're on that, let's see if this guy's still up. Uh, yeah, what was it? Okay, so it kind of works. So here's the other thing. I got uh, reminded about coming here and talking at 3 o'clock, so I, I was quickly trying to scan to see what I have. This is a newer laptop. I don't have a whole lot of my code here. This was something I put together a long time back, which is why the Bing API says, hey, your key is expired. But you kind of still get to see the point. So go ahead and go to the site on your phone or your tablet, if you, if you can. SignalRmap.cloudapp.net <coughs> Sam? <coughs> Excuse me. Are you on there already? I'm sorry? Are you on there already? I'm there, yeah. Not yet. Okay, I'm using <coughs> seeing the user count go up. Yep. Four users. Okay, so what's happening here? Five. All right, let's go. Whoa. <coughs> so we are supposed to be here. Each of 
these pins represent us, one of us, and somebody's uh, location service is really off because you cannot be there. <laughs> so somebody check with your mobile carrier. <coughs> so here's the kind of interactive apps that we can build with Singular. This, if you see, if you have seen the little blue flashing thing up front, it's an MVC3 app. That's why you have the blue template, and then I just wipe it out and put a map on top of it. What you're seeing here is a big map, just a full screen big map. This represents the number of users. I'm not actually clearing things out, so if you keep hitting refresh on your web browser, this thing is going to keep going up, right? But here's the thing. It's fine for me to see my pin on the map. How am I seeing your pins on the map? And how is it that you guys are seeing my pin and everybody else's pin on the map? We are all using different clients, but the point is SignalR with that one backend is able to push that same data out to everybody who's connected, mm -hmm. right? And that's what gives you that real-time feel, because this thing's going to go up and imagine this in a chat application, and we'll, we'll talk about chat applications in a bit. Um, it's, it's truly real-time, it's almost no lag whatsoever, right? So we'll, we'll, we'll walk through this demo and see how we build this. Is this, this hosted on Azure too? Yes, see that oh. app.net? Yes, Cloud app.net. It's on Azure. And yeah, you shouldn't be seeing that Bing portal thing, it's just saying my key is not valid. Oh, okay. All right. How long did it take you to write this? 20 minutes. Oh, okay. I'll show you how. It's really not long. Um, I'll try to duplicate one more time. It's making a cartoon to read. You're getting a uh, kink in your neck, huh? What? Hurting your neck. <laughs> yeah, it's hurting my neck. <laughs> All right, fine. Extend this. <coughs> Drivers. All right. Uh, let's start back here. How do you do this stuff yourself? I mean, now that you've seen some of the cool stuff, it's really not much. So, <coughs> Signalar um, either comes bundled in ASP.NET, so if you have the latest Visual Studio 2012, and if you have the latest, um, uh, what do they call it, update 2 or something like that on Visual Studio 2012, right? So that gets you. Um, a fresh template in Visual Studio 2012. So if, if I go in now and go to the web stack and say new application, you will see SignalR as one of the templates. Or, <coughs> even if you don't have that, on an existing application, you can grab the bits and include SignalR in your application, right? So it's a NuGet. It's a NuGet package and it's broken up into several different packages based on what you might choose to use. Um, for the most part, uh, you might want to just do this on a web application, this gets you everything that you need on your web server, right? And then if you're building iOS apps or .NET apps or Windows 8 or Windows Phone apps, we'll talk about that. Uh, there are several other libraries that you can go and grab, right? But this is fundamentally everything that gets you in there. Um, I don't think they have like separate libraries for Minarchy or Silverlight anymore. They've just combined everything into, into one now. Okay. Let's actually look at some code. You guys getting bored? This sounds interesting. I know, I mean, a lot of you come from a XAML or WPF background, so do I. And like the web stack is not my forte, but it, this is just so much fun. And it's it's nice to be building client applications based on that this backend. Okay, so this guy here is the code for that map thing that we saw. If you notice the uh, solution uh, explorer here, there is nothing magical going on. This is a simple file new project MVC3 application, right? You have your uh, controllers, you have models, and you have views. Nothing special is going on. What you do see is if I go in my reference and say manage to the packages and so R interesting saying install. Well, it should already have that. But anyways, but this is the one that you want to get, right? So it's a NuGet package. Either you do the package manager console install SignalR, or you can do the GUI and just get that. What it gets you is this guy. This, 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 and this. We'll talk about this in a bit, right? So essentially, you need this guy. This is the most important one, right? So it's one DLL on the server, on your application, right? So it's not going to break anything. It's not going to do anything wrong to your MVC2 or MVC1, even a web forms app, right? So even if you have a legacy app, 
And <clears throat> you've seen this a lot. I mean, people have massive legacy applications. They just turn on real-time connectivity on just one part of it. Because this doesn't really affect anything else. It's just one part of the communication on one page or multiple pages, right? So do your own bit to feel comfortable in what you're doing, right? So here's what we're doing. With that uh, DLL in place, we are going to write a class like this. Oh, it's going to hurt my neck. All right. See this? ASP not signal R. This tells you that you're officially part of the family. You're not some weird namespace. You're ASP.NET, right? There are a couple of different things you can do. Let's start with the easy thing out. There is a concept called hub, right? A hub is an in-memory object. Now remember, this is a CS file, right? And it's on my server. So this is never something that goes down to the client. This is entirely on the server. So on the server side, I'm saying, <coughs> I'm going to extend this concept called hub. A hub in SignalR is, a, is an in-memory object which is supposed to keep track of all the people, all the clients that are connected to that web server at any given point of time. So it is truly like a hub and spoke model, right? So you want to extend that and then we can do whatever we want on it. I'm just saying, hey, I'm going to let my clients use this method called join so that as you pull up that same website on your browser, on your browser, you're all hitting that one method called join. So you can come and join the hub, right? And this map client is what you get. The map client is nothing but a simple class like this. It simply has some sort of identifier. Could be your phone's ID, could be your browser, whatever it is that your application needs. And then it has a location <coughs> object. The location is simple lat log, right? So that's exactly what I'm doing when you go and hit that website. So let's see where, uh, where the magic happens. See this here, clients? What is it saying? ASP.NET signal our hub slash or hub dot hub connections are clients. And this is something you get from that DLL. But then look at all. The all is a dynamic keyword in C sharp saying, I'm trying to refer to all of my clients, not just one. And we'll talk about how you can group things by uh, just one client or multiple clients or just everyone. This is everyone. And then it says, add client. But look at the um, intelligence help here. It says, I don't know what this is. <laughs> right? You can go to down. You can write whatever you want. I'm not going to complain. Where do you think that is? <coughs> this is the only, so let me show you this. As we are pulling up that website, here's what's happening. It, it's going to hit the home controller, right? This is Vanilla MVC3. It's going to hit this index result and then go to welcome.asp.net. And this is going to try grabbing the index view in my views folder. Goes to home and goes to this. So it's going to go here, right? There is no other magic going on. So in, on my server, there is literally nothing else I have. I have my controllers, which I'm not using really. I have my models, which I'm also not using. I, and then I have my views. This is the CSHTML. You guys do MVC3? This is the Razor view, right? So nothing else going on. So, where is this thing? Your JavaScript? Yeah. It is not on the server. It is something on every client, right? So let's look at our index file. This is actually what gets rendered. Like, when, it, when you see this guy here, somebody else joined, this is the index study in CSHTML file that you're seeing. Here's what we're doing on it. Okay. So first up, this is um, the Bing Maps JavaScript API, and it's free for use. You can go ahead and register yourself. Um, actually, if I run this locally, you'll actually not see that weird error anymore. See that MVC? See? And it's trying to say, hey, I'm trying to read your location. Is it okay for me to do that? And I'm saying, okay, fine, go ahead. And now it's going to replace the blue thing, hopefully, with a map. And mine's pretty accurate, right? So that, that's what happened. Happening. So, I mean, so this is free for you to go and register and what you get out of registering is a key and you need to insert that key every time you use Bing Maps. It's completely free up to a really, really high limit and if Microsoft comes knocking on your door to say, hey, you're using Bing Maps all over, do you mind paying us? <laughs> it's a good problem to have because it means your application has really taken off, right? Otherwise, it's, it's free for you to use. Here's what we're doing. 
We are including a few um, JavaScript references. This is jQuery, nothing uh, magical about that. This is signal R. As a part of getting the NuGet package, we also got a few things in my um, scripts folder. And that is... <coughs> there we go. Help me find signal R. For the All right, here. Right? So that's what we're referring. And then uh, we refer something called similar house, which we'll get to it in a second. Um, and oh, actually, let's talk about this one. See this reference here? Similar slash hubs. Where is that? There is nothing here that says similar slash hubs. And we'll, we'll unpack that in a second as to what, what's happening here. But beyond that, this is just some regular. Um, web stuff, here's a div that shows you the map, here's the legend which shows you the user count, and so on. Right? When I say, um, you can actually have a random number which is not important, but here's what we're doing. Map hub, this is a JavaScript variable, and I'm saying, hey, I want you to go ahead and try to establish a connection back to this guy, which is on the server. This map hub has to be the same name with the, obviously the JavaScript difference in uh, in, in Pascal, uh, I guess, capitalization. This is the same class as this. So I want you to go ahead and make a connection to that guy. And while you're doing that, I'm going to give you some methods. See this add client? This is what our server is calling it, right? And this, let me, it's, it's really hard to have to look down on this. Let's try to show you something fun. Um, Hanselman. You guys know Hanselman? Everyone knows Hanselman. Because uh, I'm, I'm not um, being dramatic enough. I think he was. He was. <laughs> Your brain should have literally leaked out of your ears. <laughs> because what he's trying to say, okay, so think about what we're doing here. <clears throat> this is our client. This is the CSHTML file. This is what gets pushed out to every browser, right? And eventually you'll see that um, right here. This is where we actually start the connection. Once we have the handle to it, we'll go ahead and start the connection. And this is what's going on. There is nothing uh, magical about the geolocation read. It's just HTML5. It's saying, hey, can I read your geolocation based on Wi-Fi or whatever network you're on? If I do have your location, I'm going to try to put you on the map. And then eventually, I'm going to use this constructed thing using the latitudes and the longitudes of what I can read. And I'm going to say maphub.server, which means the web server, and join. And I'm going to send up this thing that I've built up, right? So this join, guess where this is? This is the same method that we defined on the, on the server, right? This is that method, right? So this is not rocket science. We have always been able to call the server from the client. But the server turns around and calls the client back. Which means, just think about this, you are calling JavaScript, a JavaScript method on every client from the server. Which is weird, because <laughs> we have never done that. Right? And you shouldn't be normally be able to do that. But that's what the similar thing is doing with, with, with its little magic. So, <clears throat> how do you think this is working? Let's go back up here and let's see if I can pull up this thing right. You guys tell me if I'm typing this somewhere wrong because I cannot see. Okay. Yep. <clears throat> Remember that reference we did on our page to singular slash hubs? If you did this uh, with, um, how many of you use like refactoring tools like Just Code or ReSharper? It's going to throw fits on this because <laughs> it's not going to find it and say, oh, what, what is this reference? When that's fine, it's going to find it at runtime. This is what's happening. On our site, if I go singular slash hubs, what you see here is dynamic JavaScript that's been generated on the server and just push down your throat on the client, right? Because otherwise, how is the client going to know what on earth is a map hub, right? It has no way of knowing. 
unless the server does it. Right? So somewhere down here, <coughs> you guys can see better than I, am, I can. Um, yeah, see that? This is map right? That's what we defined on the server. And somewhere should be a join method. You guys see that? And yeah, maybe it's this guy? Yeah? So anyway, you, you get the point here. So the server is making up all of this JavaScript and sending it down to every client. So the client can turn around and make these connections back to the server. Now, what's happening behind the scenes is a little more magical because they have um, JavaScript libraries, the jQuery.signalR.js file that we included, that has more logic to make sure that they can pick the best transport layer. They are possibly doing, uh, this is Chrome, so they are possibly doing service and events or web sockets if they can, right? And they're trying to get, establish that best connection and keep that connection alive for as long as you're seeing this web page. So that takes a little bit of heavy lifting and that's what they're trying to not have you do so that they can take care of it for you. For you. Does it make sense? A little bit? Um, let's see if we can go back and uh, yeah, this is hard. Help me find the dev tools where are they? Um F twelve. Wait, where? You said F twelve. Oh F twelve? Okay. Right. <coughs> Might have to switch the tab. Let's see. Okay. So let's see what went on. Yeah, let's see. This is F12. We'll do it here. And uh, we'll do it. F5. F5. Alright. There we go. Wow. Which one are you looking for? Can't see the signal or handshaking. Oh, okay. I see a negotiate and. Signal or dot min? Or. <coughs> No. Yeah, so the hubs thing, right? Yeah, hubs. This is the first handshake to say connection.hub.star. <laughs> and so right. the JavaScript says, okay, yeah. I need to go ahead and establish a connection. What am I supposed to do? This negotiate is the handshake that tells you, here's the best transport. This is what you have to use to go ahead and pick it. Um, so let's see. Where is the negotiate gone now? Okay. Uh, response. See this guy? Why is this thing false? It's not even trying to do web sockets. Why is this thing false? It's Chrome. Server. Exactly. So this guy is running on Azure. By default, Azure 